April, wake up! April! April! Yes? Margo, it's Draper. Oh, Draper, I'm so glad you called. Something terrible has happened. I bet it has. Logan told me about your attempt to buy his son. Draper, it's April! She's hurt herself. What are you talking about? I mean, I just came into the apartment and she's lying on the floor unconscious and I can't wake her. She might be dead. Calm down, Margo. Have you called for help? No, I was trying to revive her when the phone rang. All right, dial 911. Get an ambulance. All I'll right. be over there as soon as I can. All right. Is April sick? We don't know. Margot found her unconscious on the floor. We can't bring her around. Oh, God. You don't suppose she could have... No. no. She could have what? Well, she's been so depressed lately. I thought maybe she would have tried no, to commit... No, don't even think that. Go on, get out of here. Go find out how she is. She'll probably be fine by the time you All get right, there. Thanks. I'll call if I hear anything. One way or the other, you call me. So my little sister is becoming a pretty competent interviewer, is she? Mm-hmm. Margo's giving April more and more on-camera work. I'm gonna have to start looking behind my shoulder before long. Oh, well, listen, with all those high-powered show business types, all April uh, had to do probably was just to, uh, say the title of the picture, the others took over, she probably didn't get another word uh, in edgewise. Oh, uh, you'd be surprised. They did talk a lot, but Nola and Owen and Trent were all there to publicize Mansion of the Damned. But April held her own pretty well with them. Yeah, I must say, publicizing a picture on the news, <laughs> and the reason they got to do that was that Margot's an old friend of Owen Madison. Oh, no, come on. A feature-length film being shot in Monticello? That's news. And also, Owen has agreed to use a lot of locals as crew. I think he deserves the publicity. Well, uh, you gonna audition for a part? Why do you say that? Well, hasn't anybody ever told you your face belongs on the silver screen? Mm hmm Yes. As a matter of fact, this very afternoon. Really? Mm-hmm. I was uh, standing around after April finished the taping, and I had the honor of being singled out by Trent Archer. What did you do? Offer to give you his autograph? Offered a little bit more than that. Mr. Archer made a pass at me. Is that so? Nothing to worry about. It was an incomplete pass. I think it was just sort of a reflex action. He must think women expected of him. Huh. Listen, I was never much of a fan of his before I heard this story. You know, it's kind of interesting. I can't figure out why he agreed to play the part of the devil. I mean, he doesn't seem at all enthusiastic about it. Well, Madison probably offered him a big salary, but plus a percentage of the gross. Isn't that how they do it these days? Hmm. But you know, during the interview, he seemed really uncomfortable. And when Nola started to elaborate about this so-called curse on the picture, I thought he was going to pass out. Well, I'm glad he didn't, for April's sake. I wonder how she would have handled that. Mm. You know, I think he's afraid of this movie. <laughs> Why? Is the script that bad? I don't know. I just have the feeling that, that this curse business has him really worried. I got the impression he's very superstitious. Well, now, look, if he believes that the ghost of Hester Atherton is going to come back and try and keep her story from being told, he can't be too intelligent. <laughs> I don't think Tren Archer is a contender for a Fulbright this year. Yeah, hello. Oh, Miles, it's Draper. Thank God you're in. April has had an accident. Where are you? What happened? I don't know what happened. I'm at Margot's. She found her unconscious on the, on the floor. It could be a blow to the head. Well, has she come to? No, the paramedics are here now, trying to bring her around. Well, they know what caused it? No, Miles, we don't know anything. You know, there's any other signs of trauma to the body? Miles, I don't know. Nobody knows what her condition is. They're just getting her ready to take the Monticello General right now. All right, I'll meet you there. I'm on my way. Oh, thanks a lot, Miles. I'm going to follow you guys in the car right away. I think you'd better stay relaxed a little before you do any driving. He's right, Draper. Draper, I'm going with you, OK? Margo, do you have any idea how this could have happened? No. Well, why did I have to go to that 
damn dinner. If I'd only been here, maybe this wouldn't have happened. Yeah, you were awfully busy tonight, weren't you? That dinner wasn't the only appearance you put in tonight, oh, was it? are you talking Logan about? Logan told me about your visit. <sighs> I don't want to talk about that now. You know how badly April wants to keep Jamie and raise him as her own. Why did you have to try to buy him? When, when are you going to learn that your money is not the answer to everything? Draper, somehow, my meeting with Logan Swift doesn't seem terribly significant right now at the moment, but I'll tell you something. I love April. And if any way I could use my money to make her well, right this second, I wouldn't wait for an instant. The, the medicine cabinet. Have you checked your medicine cabinet? Um, why? Why should I? April's been awfully upset the last week. She might have felt overwhelmed. Maybe, maybe she felt so bad that she wanted oh, no. to commit suicide. No, no, Draper should never do that, never in a million right. years. Okay. Who else? Elliot. Have you seen Elliot? Was he here tonight when you left? No, uh, no, he wasn't here. He got here shortly after and stayed for a little... I talked to him on the telephone. What, have, you, have you talked to him since? No, no, why? Because he might be able to shed some light on this mess. Oh, oh no. Uh, no, Elliot doesn't know anything about it. I mean, he and April... Well, if April weren't feeling well, she wouldn't have confided in Elliot. Oh, Margo, how? I mean, how in the hell could this have happened? I, uh... I think the only thing that makes any sense is that uh, April didn't feel well, and, 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 and she got dizzy, and, and she fell, and maybe she hit her head on something. Maybe she hit her head on, on the heart. Margot. What? What? What is this doing here? Draper, my God, the jewels. I'd forgotten all about the jewels. They were here when I got home to the apartment. Uh, what? Well, maybe... Maybe someone was robbing you. No. April came down, surprised them, and they hit her. Uh, no, 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 no one was trying to steal these jewels. Well, how can you be so sure? Because, Draper, I haven't seen these jewels in months. These, these were part of the jewels that were taken the last time I was burglarized. Look, we can't worry about that now. Let's get down to the hospital. Privileges. You ought to be home eating this stuff with Star, yeah. you know? Wishful thinking. You know, when I got this assignment to replace the chief while he was on vacation, I actually thought I was going to spend half my day with my feet up on the desk reading the Police Gazette. <laughs> they really have kept you occupied, I, haven't they? I never realized how much paperwork and politics goes into this. I spent, I spent half an hour on the phone today with Councilman Stearns, convincing him that I could really not fix a parking ticket you got last week. Lord, that must be frustrating. You have to admit, if you're going to recuperate anywhere, this is a place to heal your legs. Yeah, well, I'm beginning to learn that even in this job, you got to have pretty fast feet. You know that uh, press conference I had today? Oh, yeah, the one on the special forces. Right, about deploying officers to high crime rate areas. Uh -huh. You should have heard the questions. I mean, where's the money going to come from? Does that mean other areas of the city are going to go unprotected? I began to feel like Daniel in the lion's den. Well, you know, they're just really trying to hassle you, Calvin. Yeah. I think I'll be glad when I get back on active duty. At least out on the street with the muggers. You know they're going to respect a badge. Time to eat. Hey, Calvin. Oh, hi, Deb. Hey. Well, how's uh, life in the big office? Well, whoever said it was lonely at the top lied. I've had more visitors here than I ever had in my old desk. How's the night force, Steve? Oh, everything's pretty routine, uh, except for a report I got from Sergeant Coulson of the Highway Patrol. Oh, it's not a serious accident, I hope. No, no, as a matter of fact, nothing serious at all. A few people of a small residence uh, in the suburbs of... Uh, Glenboro, about 20 miles west, have reported some strange sightings. Don't tell me. The Martians are landing uh, in Monticello. Terrific, that's all I need. Mean. <laughs> At least they could have done was wait until the chief got back. No, 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 it's no UFOs or anything like that. They've all uh, described something uh, like strange lights in an abandoned uh, building out there. Yeah, and the report was made by a bunch of kids on their way home from a horror movie, right? No, as a matter of fact, about a half a dozen people, grown-ups, have uh, made the sighting. Maybe there's a full moon. 
Uh, the lights all change in intensity and they travel from one part of the building to another. Couldn't it just be a couple of drifters who decided to take up residence? They're using, you know, lanterns or flashlights. Or Has Carlson investigated? Uh, yeah, as a matter of fact, he uh, said the place is locked up as tight as a drum. Well, could be uh, reflections from passing cars. No, it sounds to me like there isn't much to worry about. No, I don't think Carlson thinks that way either. Here, read the report. You see, strange things are happening in Glenboro. The case of the dancing lights continues. Following are the two most recent explanations offered by eyewitnesses. Number one, alien beings have landed and are using the abandoned building to repair their flying saucer before heading home. If this is true, they may be with us for quite some time, considering that I have been trying to locate a carburetor for my European car for several months now. I, I have no it. idea where they'll get replacement parts. Has a sense of humor, doesn't he? <clears throat> Two. The government is conducting secret tests in germ warfare. I discounted this theory as the gentleman who offered it immediately proceeded to try and sell me a World War II surplus gas mask of which it appears Oh, come <laughs> on. Now look, I don't really have time for this. This is supposed to be some kind of a joke. No, I, I think he's serious. Um, he goes out of his way every night, out on Route 24, to see if he can see these lights. So far, no luck. Wait a minute, did you say an abandoned building on Route 24? Yeah. Well, I know the place. Yeah, so have you seen any dancing lights there? No, it's not even abandoned anymore. It's the new site for the Mansion of the Damned. Deborah, are you absolutely sure about that? Yeah, I'm positive. It was in the press guide that was given out to everybody at the party to celebrate the beginning of production. Well, why is it that the residents of Glenboro don't know what's going on in their own backyards? Well, maybe they don't because Owen Madison is trying to keep this movie of his low key. Yeah, they announced at the party that they wanted an absolutely closed set, no visitors allowed. Well, Madison might be trying to make this movie very intriguing. Well, how come you didn't make the connection, Steve? You were at this uh, party. Because I didn't see anything in the press guide about it. Well, come to think about it, I don't know if I saw it there either. Yeah, maybe uh, Madison showed it to you on another occasion. Well, anyway, the uh, mystery of the dancing lights is solved, right? Mm -hmm. Right. Sounds like it's the lights from the construction crew who are doing the renovating or something. Well, I'll call the precinct in Glenbar, let them know what's going on. All right. Wait a minute, wait a minute, Tom. Let me look at something. Uh... Steve, these lights can't possibly be connected with work, man. Look at the time. Everything has been recorded for after midnight, 1, 2 o'clock in the morning. What would they be doing renovating that time of night? I don't know. Maybe that's show business. It's bad business, if you ask me. Why in the world would they hire a construction crew to work on a low-budget film? I don't think Owen would do that. Well, look, um... Maybe it's just the lights from a uh, security guard on patrol. No, 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 that's not it. When we were at the party, Madison asked me if I could recommend a security service. He, uh, he doesn't have one yet. Well, Deborah is right. All the sightings were in the wee hours of the morning. Now, who'd be out there then? Maybe it's not a who. Maybe it's a what. Now, how's that? Haven't you heard? The movie is haunted. Has a curse, doesn't it, Deborah? Oh, look, it's just a big publicity stunt. But it's funny that every time they've tried to start this thing, something's always gone wrong. Yeah, it's the ghost of old Hester Atherton. She's a witch, Calvin. She's in league with the devil. Maybe we better go tell Owen about it. Uh, since you and he are such good friends, why don't you go talk to him? Dr. Archer to pediatrics. Nurse downstairs told me that this is April's room. Yes, uh, they only allow two 
people in at a time. Draper and Miles are in there right now. Well, have any idea what's wrong with you? No. Bring that they uh, they say she struck her head and then she's still unconscious. What? Well, how serious is it? I don't know. <laughs> They've run a battery of tests. She's still alive. I mean, that's all they're able to tell us or all they're willing to tell us. My God, I had no idea. I can't tell you how sorry I am. Oh, pangs of guilt, Mr. Swift. What? Do you realize that April has been ill ever since you decided to take Jamie away from her? You're blaming this on me? All I know is that she has been ill. She's been ill. If you haven't put all that stress on her, maybe, just maybe, this accident wouldn't have happened. You're obviously upset, so I'm going to let this pass. Look, your wife wanted her to have Jamie. Why couldn't you have respected her wishes? My wife gave Jamie to April and Draper to hurt me. I told you that. She knows how much I love the boy, and she wanted to punish me. Revenge is her favorite game. You have no legal claim on that child. One of these days, I will explain to you my position, and oh. then you will understand now is not the time. You know what I think? I think you're just being spiteful. <laughs> oh, Mr. Swift, you know how much better off Jamie would be with two parents? Well, how much better off would I be, hmm? Well, a lot better off. Oh, come on, you're a man. A man has a career. A career is much more important to a man than a baby could ever be. And they say men are chauvinists? Everyone would have been better off if you had just done as I had told you. Oh, yes. I would have been $30,000 better off, wouldn't I? 30000 a year for five years. Let's see, that's 150000 How much is that per pound of baby? All I know is that I would like to be in there when April opens her eyes, and I would like to be able to tell her that, that Jamie's here. How do you think she would feel when she found out that I sold him for 150000 of your dollars? I don't know what would matter, but she doesn't have to know. Mrs. Dorn, I feel sorry for April, I really do. I feel a hell of a lot more sorry for you. Why doesn't she come too, Miles? I wish I had an answer for you, Draper. Dr. Wallace told me that her vital signs have remained strong throughout. That's encouraging. This never should have happened. You don't even know what happened. It's my fault. I should have never let her get out of the house. I should have grabbed her. I should have sat her down and made her realize that what I did with Logan and Jamie was right. I'm sure the two things aren't related at all. Maybe. Listen, try to relax, will you? When she wakes up, she's going to want to see a smile on your face, girl. My first thought when, when I heard about April was that she tried to commit suicide. I mean, she's been so depressed lately. She's been through so much. She shouldn't suffer like this. Hey, no. She's not suffering right now. I'm sure she'll be all right. Any change in her condition, Miles? No, I'm afraid not. Well, have you figured out what's wrong with her yet? Well, we're waiting to look at the x-rays. If you'll excuse me, I'd like to take a look at my patient. Come on, Trevor. Let's let the doctor do his work. Any news? Nothing. With all the modern technology, can't they do something to help her? Margaret, you have no idea how April was hurt? No, apparently she hit her head. Well, fell was she hit? Did she fall? What happened, Margot? She must have fallen, Draper. There are no signs of violence. Doctor, what, what, what's happening? Uh, Miss Scott's condition is stable. Uh, we should know more in a few minutes. Well, the x rays are ready, and I think I better go take a look at them right now.
Dr. Miles, Wright. what the hell is taking so long? It takes a while to look over x-rays like that. I think it's something serious. Something very serious they don't want to tell us about. This is the one I seriously doubt that anybody's withholding information from you around here. Yeah, look, I can't sit still anymore. I've got to go talk Draper. to somebody. Draper! Okay, Bill. I owe you one, huh? Thank, Thank you very much for the consultation. You got it. Take care. All right. You guys are sure taking your time. I think I wore a path in the hallway outside my wife's room. Well, we just have to be thorough, Mr. Scott. Now, I just finished a consultation with Dr. Slocum. Oh, terrific. Now, what have you discovered? Well, the news is very good. Your wife has sustained a slight concussion, nothing more. Oh, thank God. In a few days, she'll be as good as new, and the only thing to remind her of this unpleasant incident will be a headache. Simple concussion? Then why is she still unconscious? Well, I think, uh, I think it was more than the blow on the head. I think she sustained some kind of shock. But she's all right. Now, you're sure about yeah, that? It yeah. took you so long to get this answer. Well, even though the blow was the only injury, we thought it'd be wise to check on the condition of the fetus, and uh, I just want to... Wait a second, that... wait a minute. Yes? Check on the condition of what? Well, the baby, Mr. Scott. Oh, you guys are really to... blown at this time. Hell, we're not even talking about the same patient. Uh, April Scott, female, Caucasian, blonde hair, very pretty. Yeah, pretty, very pretty, but not pregnant. Well, she certainly is. According to Dr. Slocum, she's just about entering her third month. Third month? Mr. Scott, you didn't even know?